Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video today. Today, we're going to be talking about your questions that you had for the spirit guides a few days ago. I uh, was going to get to part two. Now I'm at part two. So I'm going to be asking my spirit guides your questions, and they're going to be answering them. Now, when I do this work, I am channeling I am about 40% of my consciousness is Susan, 60% is the guides. That means that I'm getting information and then mixing the information and then trying to get it out of my mouth. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, sometimes I mispronounce things. Sometimes the guides just don't give me the word for things. And my 40% consciousness can't find the word either. So look, it is what it is. Doing the best I can over here. So let me get started here. I think this is a brilliant question that Jennifer B. had. And she said she had a dream about Biden. Don't worry, it wasn't that kind of dream. Uh, he was surrounded by all these angels and white light. And it wasn't that kind of dream either. Don't worry about that. Because I was like, whoa, what, what is she trying to say? Whew. Anyway, Jennifer, you scared us twice now, okay? Um, so he, she says he's had such a hard life, but seems like a positive person. I often think he is being led to do the right thing. He has also often said he listens to his gut. Is he psychic? And if so, does he know it? I thought that was a really interesting question because as I asked my spirit guides, they quickly showed me, you don't get to a position of a world leader without having a really good intuition. You don't really actually get to a position of high responsibility, whether that's, you know, maybe even the principal of a school or the police chief or whatever it is without learning to listen to your intuition. But we don't recognize that. Uh, humans often gloss over that. Like, I just know this is going to happen. And somebody says, well, how do you know? I don't know, but I just know. How many times have you yourself said that? I don't know, but I just know. Folks, that's claircognizance. That is psychic knowing right there. So Biden is very psychic. He keeps it to himself. Of course, he doesn't, he's he's a very stable guy, a very middle of the road guy. He, he really likes that persona. That is who he is. And if he started saying that I've seen ghosts and I talked to my son, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't play well with um, our current public, right? It, it just wouldn't go over well. Yes, he is psychic. It also, they're telling me it also does not jive with his Catholicism, okay? So he kind of doesn't understand it. Um, also, Biden is a very private man. Um, he has a very public persona that seems to be very happy and jovial and easygoing. But he's a Scorpio energy, so he has a deep dive. He, is, he can be very, very private. Um, and I'm saying some of these things he doesn't even share with his wife. He has had experiences where his son, is it his son, Bo? They're telling me it's his son, Bo, right? That's on the other side. He's had experiences where his son, Bo, has, has visited him. They're giving me chills on that. Um, in dreams, but also in his waking moments. Also, he has had, um, you know, like I'm saying before, knowings. Uh, he knows what to do. He just he just knows. And and he's very comfortable trusting that. Um, I often tell people, if you're claircognizant, which is psychic thinking, and you don't really realize it, you've led a life where, honestly, you've just been right a lot more than you've been wrong. And you get used to that. And you think, well, it's not that I'm brilliant or I'm some egotistical maniac. It's that I'm really grounded. I'm a really practical person. These other people are airy-fairy. No, honey, that's not it. You're psychic and you've been relying on these psychic abilities. You just didn't know it. That is exactly what Biden's been doing. He trusts his gut. He also tends to surround himself with generals and other people that he recognizes that same ability in. He values people that trust their intuition. He also values people that don't talk about it, <laughs> but but he is. So I think that's a fascinating question. Thank you for 
asking that. That's really, really, I never would have thought to ask that question. That's why I love to hear your questions. It always gives me a new um, angle uh, to talk about these things that we're very familiar with uh, to the guides. So um, Pamela Kasanovich says, a little bit of a loaded question. Uh, will Nancy Pelosi be Speaker of the House in February 2023? I really think we're somehow going to win. Fingers crossed. Yes, Pamela, I agree. I will tell you right now, I do see, I do see Nancy Pelosi with her little tiny body and her little tiny hand, like going like this. Like we we did it. Now, how can this happen? Well, today, um, uh, a California House member just won his race. We're slowly bridging the gap. Now, obviously, we're probably not going to get the numbers we need to actually win the House right now. But the guides said, and it's on video, and I'm really going to try to find it. They said this before the day of the E-L-E-C-T-I-O-N, that the guides had said they reduced the number of seats that we would win down to one or two, keeping the majority, which was wrong. But they said, you will flip, you will get more seats in January. There will be a reshuffling of the seats and Dems will come out net positive one. So this is how I think we're going to get there. Look, you guys, some of these House members we're involved in Jan 6, and we know that, I know that, you know that. We don't need to be psychic to know that. This is pretty obvious. Now, what is also pretty obvious is the Dems have new courage. And we talked about this in the last video. The Dems now have new courage. They have new stamina. They're they're actually creating a, a group, a, a committee. I just read about this. They're just creating a new committee that's going to do nothing but counterpunch the R's, the Republicans, in their attacks. So when the R's say some crazy thing, the Dems are going to have a committee that does nothing but go back to the media and say, no, we want to correct the record. That's new. That's new energy. So you will see the Dems hold these people to account, to account and get rid of them. Okay. Now, the question is, and this is what the guides talked about in that last video, this is what it's going to come down to is whether that state can appoint um, a, a, a D where there was an R or whether there's a special runoff. But the guides are telling me we're going to see Nancy Pelosi be victorious. Now, I'm seeing her going like this, being happy. It could also be that Trump gets indicted, right? There's a lot of things that could make Nancy Pelosi jump for joy in her heel. Now, I don't know that Nancy keeps that post because she really does want to want to hand the mantle over. She really does want to um, just freaking retire, to be honest with you. Thank you for your question, Pamela. That was very interesting. Uh, Linda Walker says, hi, Susan. Will Ukraine take all of their land back, including Crimea? Now, I, I'm going to tell you guys again, it's really worth, truly worth watching. If you click on my icon, you'll go to my main channel and you can just type in search Susan's channel for Crimea or search Susan's channel for Ukraine. You'll see I did three videos at the very beginning of this conflict, this attack. And frankly, everything the guide said has come literally down to the wire true, everything. Um, and where we are now, is towards the end of the last video where they say that uh, Russia will be pushed over to the Kherson, to the Donetsk region, to the east along the river. And that was where Russia was going to dig in. And here we are. Now, what I didn't see coming was Iran backing um, Ukraine. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't ask the question, so I didn't get the answer. That's a big deal. That's a big game changer, you guys. Iran is the reason why Russia can bomb the bejesus out of Ukraine right now because they're using a lot of these Iran-made uh, drones that are just basically suicide drones. So um, that that complicates things. Now we have 
a rogue country, a country that that America doesn't recognize particularly as a democratic or, a, or even a nice country and a country that's actually experiencing its own internal conflict um, with, you know, the women that are there protesting against uh, the, the morality police. Um, that complicates things. But I will say to you that the guides have been telling me that they will get Crimea back. I mean, that is the bastion of the last part of, of Ukraine that they could get back. They've lost Crimea, I think, in 2014. Russia annexed it. So Crimea has been Russia-controlled since 2014. And um, Zelensky wants it back. I, I, I said in those videos that the West would pressure Zelensky to accept a peace deal and that's already been happening over and over again. Different different partners in the West have asked Zelensky to look. Uh, let's just let them have the annexed portions. And look, you can have peace. You can save your citizens. We'll help you rebuild. Zelensky's like, no, no. He will crawl on his hands and knees over broken glass if he's the last one standing to get this land back. That is just how it is. And now the world powers that be really understand that. And also, um, they're going to continue to help him in bigger ways. In other words, sending more air defense missiles, which would help them with these bombs. Uh, but we are at a at a at a stressful point. That uh, bomb, that errant bomb that hit Poland. I, I really try not to talk about too many things because it's it's. Um, well, it's just dangerous. <laughs> That's what the guides are saying. So I'm just going to tell you that that I I do think that 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 came from Russia. I don't think that it was. Um, I think Russia was involved. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. What they said in in the in the video yesterday was Biden would prevail. He did prevail. He talked to Zelensky. He talked to um, the Polish president. And and he's working out some kind of calming, cooling period. And also we're rushing more arms to Ukraine. But Zelensky is a truth teller. He's not going to he's not going to cover something up just to make everybody feel better. That is why he is there. That is why Ukraine is involved in this. This is, they are the truth tellers. They are here to help us understand that we have to deal with these bullies once and for all. You cannot placate them because he they will eventually come after you. Just like Hitler with the Jews, eventually they're going to come after you too. That is why Zelensky and Ukraine are here to teach the world a lesson. And we're going to learn it because, because Zelensky is not going to back down. So I see something really good happening in Ukraine in December of this year, like to, like next um, next month. And I do see Ukraine taking control of Crimea, but I will tell you that the guides are telling me it is a trail of tears. It is, um, history may look back and say, but at what cost? Uh, history may look back and say, this was it worth it. It's really going to cost a price. Um, but the Ukrainian people have more heart and soul and guts, I think, than any other people on earth right now. And um, they want their land back. So I think they will get it back. Thank you for your question, Linda. Um, let's see if I can get my computer to work here. So, Christina, we think I did talk about this. I'm channeling, so I don't know what I talked about uh but christina pearson says well some of the newly okay well okay newly elected and re-elected members of the house lose their seats due to participation in jan 6 or good point other criminal activities i like the way you slid that in there christina other criminal activities before the new congress opens on january 3rd 2023 no they're not going to do it before january 3rd 2023 the guides mentioned in that video that I did a couple of weeks ago or whenever that was, that 
there could be a delay seating the Congress, that there was a shakeup and there could be a delay. That's one thing that energy suggests could happen. This is not 100%. There's nobody that can predict this 100% because I'm not 100%. Human energy is never 100% predictable. We have free will. And in this case, we're talking about hundreds of people that have free will. So very hard to predict. But I do see the energy favoring a shakeup in January. Maybe around Martin Luther King Day, for some reason, um, that maybe an investigation is opened or we hear something about an investigation or we think to ourselves, oh, that doesn't sound good or um, that's going to hurt is what I actually heard the guides say. So I do think there's going to be a shakeup and I do think that we're going to have a different a different coalition of members than we have now. Some are going to go, some are going to come in. I think we're going to shake out to have plus one dim. It's not great, but it's something. It's something. It's 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 a miracle. Honestly, it's a miracle. Um, the guides are like, what are you talking about? That's a miracle. Um, so thank you, Christina. Joanne Harper says, uh, when, oh, I have to be, careful with this question. When I was saying, I uh, did a video and one of you guys asked me who was on Biden's spiritual team of advisors. It's a great, a great team. I, I can't go into it right now. It was all stars. I mean, Gandhi was on there. Uh, just amazing people were on there. Um, and I didn't even get all of them. There were still more that I couldn't, I couldn't just reach energetically. Right. Um, but her question is what team does 45 and company have? They must be either in tears or having cocktails right now. Well, I did do a little, um, short video that said, I, it just came to me that Donald Trump's spirit guide was a parole officer. <laughs> I still think that's funny. Um, now this could be a whole video. Maybe I'll do a whole video on this. I say these things, but I'm channeling and I don't remember what the heck I even said. So remind me. But I think it'd be interesting to do a video of why, who Donald Trump is to us. Why is he here? Who are his guides? Are they happy with him? Is he fulfilling his role on earth? All that. That could be an hour long video. But I will say that, right. Okay. 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 That's good. All right. That's very helpful. Thank you. So here's the deal. We all have a main spirit guide, okay? A main spirit guide, or maybe up to three. That spirit guide simply helps us on our life life path, our life, our soul journey. Not gonna help you with your order that got wrong at the restaurant. <laughs> not gonna help you lose weight. Not gonna, none of that stuff unless it matches up with your soul journey, okay? When it comes to your soul journey, man, they get involved. They send you thoughts, they put people in your life, they change your life, they give you energy, all those things. Donald Trump's spirit guide is involved in, with him in his role to be a disruptor, in his role to be, to basically act in a way that is so egregious to our moral compass is what they're saying. Donald Trump is supposed to allow us to see what our true moral compass is. Are we anti-Semitic? Are we racist? You know, are we are are we willing to say that um, this person's better than that person? Are we the kind of people that that puts down disabled people? Are we the kind of people that puts down poor people? Who are we? The guides often say, what will humans choose? You guys, this is a big old test down here. This is a big old classroom and we're in the middle of a big effing test. And his guide is helping him be a wrecking ball. I see a wrecking ball, just wrecking everything, wrecking democracy, wrecking our viewpoint of ourselves America, who is America, right? They're showing me 
how the Republicans are trying to remove any any education about the Civil War or racism and how we have these people that deny the Holocaust. Oh my God, who are we? This is our opportunity to all of us wake up and say, you know what? I just thought this was a kooky guy who was saying bad things. And I just thought it didn't really affect me. And I just thought I could go on living my life. But now I realize that I actually have Jewish friends. I actually have maybe a a black uh, wife or husband or biracial kids or gay kids or my child is transgender. And all of a sudden this isn't so funny. This actually really means something to me. And I'm willing to stand up about this and I'm willing to speak out against this. That's what his role here is. That's what his guide is doing. Now, I want to point out something important. We can also, we can also choose what I call, for lack of a more sophisticated term, helper guides. Now, if I want to lose weight or I want help with my taxes, swear to God, I really did this last year and it was the best ever. Um, or I mean, people even use these people to buy, to get parking spots. Honestly, it doesn't matter. You're not bothering them. They, they're they happy to help. This is, they're, they're waiting for humans to call for help, truly. So you can call for a helper guide and you can say, hey, I need some help right now. I'm feeling depressed. I, I need some help raising my vibration. Well, then all of a sudden, once you say that, and if you say it from here and not from here, you say it from your heart, all of a sudden, swear to God, you're going to see ads for guided meditation and you're going to be signing up for, uh, you know, raise your vibration classes. I mean, you really will. You'll do it without thinking because that's guidance. But what I want to tell you guys is, is that Trump has asked for guides because this is his, he's taken this too far. Okay. So the guides are telling me he's taken this too far kind of gone rogue. So he's not only just disrupting, but now he's capitalizing on the disruption and he's it's it's feeling good in his body in a way that it wasn't supposed to feel good. He was supposed to be, uh, if you've ever heard somebody say, I don't know, I can't help myself, like an addict. I can't help myself. He was supposed to have that mentality. I can't help myself. I don't know why I do these things. But now he's gone from, I can't help myself to, I enjoy this. This is fun. Give me more. So he's brought in helper guides like Stephen Goebbels, whoever, all these people that are truly from that era. I have to be careful what I say. But there, it appears to me, my opinion is, allegedly, whatever legal term I need to throw in there, that he's brought in this energy. So he's reveling in it. So he's his guide is actually trying to lift him out of that energy because he's he's just loves it too much. He's taken it too far. Um, hopefully that makes any sense, right? Um, his main guides are not, they, they can't, they can guide you. Mm, right. They can guide you, but they can't stop you. We ultimately have free will. You can spend your whole life never getting on your soul path. It's up to you. So what they just showed me was they can, to help us, um, they, they'll really do anything they can, truly. So what they will do is they may bring an outside force in to buffet you. You know, you may get arrested and that that arrest may save your life because let's say that you were a terrible alcoholic and you were driving drunk all the time and you were about to kill somebody and your guides set up a situation where you're arrested and you're able to dry out and deal with your addiction and then come back and change your life. Sometimes bad things happen to us and it actually changes us off of our destructive path. So that's what they're saying. His guide now will actually work with those people who are favorite sheroes, Tish James, Fonnie Willis, and E. Jean Carroll. 
They will work with those women to help take him out because he's gone too far. He's gone beyond what his contract was. He's gone rogue is what he's done. Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for your question. That was very fascinating, Joanne. Um, Suja, I don't, I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, Suja P says, I always thought that Biden would run and, and win in 2024, but then would step down to make Kamala Harris president. Uh, she says, I'm sure he wants to retire and just be with his family instead of all this chaos. What are your guys' thoughts? Maybe Beto as Kamala's VP. I agree with you. I've all, always, for whatever reason that I can't explain, whenever I first saw Kamala Harris on TV as Biden's pick for VP, my guides came through and said, president. Now, they don't do that kind of stuff. That's why I have you guys ask questions because if you don't ask the question, they don't, they're not going to interrupt me to tell me something unless it's important. So they pronounced her president. I do believe she's going to be president. I think that she has a karmic role to play here in the United States. I think that she's, they're calling, they've always called her the law and order president. I don't think it's going to be sunshine and lilies. I think it's going to be a tumultuous time here that we need a law and order president. Uh, I see her not being popular with the left and I see her not being popular with the right, but the guides tell me she will be fair. Now, this is based on a particular timeline. If if we enter this timeline, then she is the karmic connection, the, the, she's the resonance with the timeline. So far, we've avoided a bunch of bad timelines because I've seen the timelines. I'm watching all this unfold and I'm seeing how the energies, instead of manifesting in this way, are manifesting slightly different, honestly, much better. The same energy, slightly different. That's because we are sending the light. We're sending the light out there. We are moving the timeline to a less a less horrible timeline. They also just told me the majority of Americans and the majority of humans are not racist. They're not anti-Semites. They're, they're good people, honestly. And that is also helping the timeline not devolve into this sort of terrible timeline. So just not even if you're sending the light, if you're just a kind, generous person, who is not judgmental against other people, be they whatever different from you, whether they're Native American or gay or trans or Asian or any other thing or, or Muslim. Doesn't matter. Don't judge, right? So that's helping us avoid this timeline, which is fantastic. But I do see a strong possibility. Right now it's at about 80%. And I do think Beto would be a great VP, but I honestly think that uh, th that they would like to have Adam Kinzinger because they would love to have a Democrat and a Republican. It would it would make the moderates in both parties just beyond thrilled, right? And I think it would send a message to the American people that we really want to bridge this divide. We don't want to be divided. We're willing to bridge this divide, and it's very much a Democrat thing. The Republicans are, are so divided, want to be divided, are dividing themselves. The Democrats are always the ones reach across the aisle, reach across the aisle. So it makes sense that a Democratic president would reach across the aisle and bring somebody in like Adam Kinzinger. Um, now, I think that's a better fit. Of course, people want Liz Cheney. If you're new here, you may not know how I feel about Liz Cheney, but I would just tell you, yes, she did the right thing. Yes, she did the thing any American should do. She voted against traitors. She did not join traitors. That's the bare minimum that I expect an American to do. When you look at her voting record, she voted over 90% with Donald Trump. She's not a moderate Republican. Now, she may try to become one, but in her heart, she's a Cheney girl. All right. We know what they do. All right. So thank you for your question, Suja. That's great. Um, 
Anna Macedo Masada. I'm so sorry. I'm probably like totally butchering every last one of y'all's names. Anna asked, will there be investigations into the Florida voting? I just heard no. See, that kind of stuff makes me mad, to be honest with you. Mm. Well, let me ask again in a different way. Maybe I'll get a different answer. Um, will, will there be investigation into Florida voting in 2023? That's more of a yes. There's really more energy around DeSantis being investigated allegedly around money. I've said this over and over and over. The guides have said this until I'm tired of saying it, but it's coming for him. It's coming for him. Investigation around money. Now you recall, maybe his wife is in charge of a big charity, uh, a big amount of money in a charity that was to benefit the hurricane survivors. So that could be, maybe maybe that has something to do with it, but I honestly think it has to do with campaign. I think it has to do with uh, Greenberg. What is, what's that guy's name that was his... Uh, the, so you have Gates, you have DeSantis and Green somebody. I think it's Greenberg. Is it, isn't that the guy that is being rung up is what the guides like to say, investigated, um, indicted over um, some underage sex scandal. But but for DeSantis, what I see is it's all about the money. There seems to be some money in a washing machine. I'll put it like that. Um so I don't know that that we're going to get the investigation into the Florida voting, or if it is, it will be a small investigation, not a great big, 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 big thing. I really think they're focusing on him and that particular area of concern. Thank you for your question. Uh, appreciate it, Anna. And Cindy P., how are you? Says, um, uh, I know health care has been on the back burner, even for Democrats, as I heard no one mention it during the elections. Will we have universal health care in the next two years? And if not, when? Um, the guides have often said that we are going to have, I don't know if you would call it universal health care, but I would say more like Medicare for all. And I don't know why universal is a word that they don't, It. I don't know. But anyway, um, we will have expanded health care. How about that? We will have expanded health care. Um, I don't. We'll try. The, the Dems will try. I see that they will try to do something. But it's not going to work. We're going to have kind of a little bit of a tight wire. Is that a word? Uh what is that wire? What's what? What are they even talking about? When you a tight rope, <laughs> a t a tight rope where you walk on a single rope across a you know an abyss. Uh, that's us. That's that's us trying to get through the next two years. Um, we're not going to really have the votes to do anything big like that. But I do think that what you will see in the next two years is a and here's another word that I don't think is a word a solidification. <laughs> You're going to see more progress being made towards those types of things, uh, better health care, um, just more uh, consumer rights, you know, more liberal, what, you, what some people would call liberal things. You're going to see a big jump towards that by 2025. We sort of have to get across this wire for the next two years. Um, and, and, and the next two years are really going to be about Democrats putting forth their platform. Democrats will continually say, this is what we stand for. This is what they stand for. This is what we stand for. This is what they stand for. This is why the Republicans didn't even have a platform. They refused to have a platform. They refused to tell the American people what in the heck they stand for. All they said was, we stand for everything Democrats uh, want, we stand against. So two years, the Democrats will pummel, literally pummel the Republicans and make it clear to the American people 
this is in your best interest. You want social security. You want Medicare. You want Medicaid. You want these things. And if you do, we're your party. So this is what they're going to do for the next two years. It's going to be sort of a branding. You're going to see literally them hire marketing Hollywood to brand the D Democratic Party. You know, we're behind the eight ball. We we probably 10 years behind this. But you want to know what? We have Hollywood on our side. We have famous celebrities. We have real talent that will come out and help us rebrand ourselves. And we will get that universal health care eventually, probably right around 25. Um, thank you for your question. I appreciate that. And and we will get row row back. The guides have always said that we're going to get row back. It will be either codified in law, um, some kind of way we're going to get it back. Um, now here's a Pamela Vendetti says, any info on whether or not the filibuster remains a roadblock to getting progressive legislation passed? Um, okay, so the filibuster. Um, you can see, like, I'm trying to release the stress. Um well, the filibusters is going to be interesting, right? Because um, unless the the Dems and the Republicans work together, you're going to see a lot of filibustering. Um, you're going to see just a complete, just, you know, headbutting, nothing gets done. Um, but actually what they're showing me is this. This is good news. Remember that the guide said that there's going to be a shakeup in the house, the seat, the, it's going to be a jumbling or a reorganization of the seats. And I really think that about halfway, about maybe, maybe the end of 23, um, all that is shaken out. And then we kind of have a better idea of the lay of the real lay of the land. And I get this sense that we're sort of picking ourselves up, dusting ourselves off. Wow, that was hard. That was uh, roller coastery, and we fell off and landed in dirt a few times. But we're okay. We get up, we dust ourselves off, and then we create new coalitions. I do see new coalitions of Republicans working with Democrats. I do see us getting things done. I like the debt ceiling. Those kinds of things will pass um, because again. These Republicans don't want to be, they they really don't want to be connected to this crazy wing of their party. The crazy wing of their party cost them the Senate, cost them the presidency, pretty much basically cost them the House and cost them a whole bunch of governorships. They don't want to be connected to this crazy part of them, but they are like your arm is connected to your body. They can't get rid of it. They can try and get rid of it, but it, they can't. It's going to stick with them. So they're they're going to work hard to try to, they may even help. They may even call the tip line and say, yeah, I got some tips for you anonymously to get rid of these crazy people. The Republican Party cannot continue with them in the party. It's like a cancer. They need to get rid of it. So. You're going to see a big change of power. And uh, I think we will see the filibuster, but I don't see us getting rid of it because right now we're going to be in the minority. We're going to want to use it ourselves. So, um, and neither side trusts the other. So nobody wants to get rid of it. So I don't really see it getting rid of it, but I do see because of these other things the guides just talked about that we're going to end up working more together towards the end of 23 going into 24 for that big presidential election, which is going to be real interesting. Let's see. I just need to do uh, something simple because um, I don't have much time because I actually have a session. This is an interesting question by Deb B. Kane. If President Biden runs in 2024, what is the most beneficial re-election campaign process promise, excuse me, election, re-election campaign promise or running mate. Again, it's bipartisanship. By this time, the Republicans will have basically imploded, um, amputated their arm, <laughs> you know, gnawed it off in the middle of the night. I don't know, but somehow they will have gotten rid of that, that really crazy group of people. Um, 
and they will be understanding. Um, look, the, the, the guides have talked about this. The Republicans are brilliant strategists. They're going to be spending the, the whole spring in sequester looking at the votes. How did people vote? How did people vote from this county, from this state? They're not, they're not idiots. They're going to read the writing on the wall that Roe is, is important. They're going to read the writing on the wall. This candidate said they wanted X, Y, and Z, and they lost. So they're going to come out of the shoot. They're going to come out of the shoot of this election. Probably shouldn't have said that word. And they're going to, and they're going to start pivoting. They're going to start putting the lipstick on the pig to reinvent themselves. So I think Biden runs in 24 as a consensus builder, as an olive branch holder. Because that's what that's what Americans want. And I think that the Republican Party will do the hard work of helping get rid of this terrible, crazy people that, that have tried to take over their party. Then I think there's going to be goodwill and there's going to be room for Democrats to sit down and work with Republicans. I think that is going to be the primary thrust. And that's why I often say Biden would like a ticket of a Democrat and a Republican. You know, and I, I honestly, I know Biden is saying he's going to run. That man is amazing. He is divinely guided. Um, and this is from a person who wasn't always a fan. Okay. But when it comes right up down to the wire of 24, I'm not sure if he has the stam stamina. Um, he may, and I think the other commenter is right. He may run in 24 and just, here you go, Kamala. You know, I can't do this. I, I don't, I don't have the stamina. I don't have the health. I can't do this. And that will free her up to take on a Republican running mate. So listen, thank you guys so much. I know I didn't get to everybody's questions because there were over a hundred questions. Uh, but I think this was interesting. Hopefully you did too. Um, we're in a weird place. We're in a historic place in the history of our nation. And, um, you know, that curse, may you live in interesting times. Well, here we are, you and I living in interesting times. But I really am, I'm hopeful, to be honest with you. I'm hopeful. This was a historic win in so many ways. We, we haven't gotten the house yet. I do think that we're going to get it by one. We're either going to be minus one or plus one. Um, to be honest with you, it's still it's still a loggerhead. It, it doesn't necessarily give us any majority because, you know, we have two House members that are, um, you know, dinos that are Democrat in name only. So um, it doesn't really give us any great big thing. But um but I do think that that rejiggering of the count of the house, that's going to be quite interesting. Let's all, let's all just hold the light, hold the line and send the love, send the love to yourself, send the love out there to Biden and all the people who are doing the right thing, be they wherever they are in the world. Okay. Take really good care of yourself. I'll see you again right here on this channel. for entertainment purposes only.